Without color, you'd be in a white room. And while you're in that white room, what do you think about? And we meditate on this. And from this is where we get our start. That somewhere there had to be this white room. And someone drew lines and made all these shapes and gave it dimensions and gave it densities. And, and I think that's uh, in art that in the image of Elohim created he men and women that we all have that nature within us. That no matter what our situations, we have that white room mentality. That we are from a nature in us, created in us, beyond all that is physical. That we can manifest the white room in our mind, and the voice of thought. The thought is without color. I, I don't know. Maybe it does have color. Maybe some people, their thoughts talk to them like John Wayne. Um, maybe some people, they talk to them like Cindy from the Brady Bunch. Um, I wouldn't know what mine sound like unless... I had another person to compare it to. But in, in that, that position, over all the stars, over all the universe, is that white room position where you can look around and see nothing and make things appear. And a lot of times, this dreams, uh, this delusion, um, becomes our ruin in excess because we don't know what to stop and that despite um, where we all are all the pictures we see each of us go to a white room and everybody shares that same white room because it's white it's without it's just where the thoughts go but from that white room we've created such worlds, such things, some of which aren't even true. You look someone in the eyes and you know what they're thinking and you know what they're thinking and then they're looking at you without a thought in the world just sort of getting on with their day and some people get that mentality that everybody's out to attack you, everybody's out to get you and that's in itself pretty awesome that you can do that that we have the free will to lose lo lose the will that we even have uh, that's playing high stakes uh, but if you're gonna have the perfect experience you have to have the realm of all things and oh some days I sat on the toilet or some days I broke my arm and the extent of pain I couldn't imagine uh, people who drown, uh, people who, you know, have deadly poisons, uh, tumors that stretch and cancers that flow into the bloodstream and all that, and just how that might feel at the end of the day, that from Jesus we get that you can get so, so elated, so perfect that you just become light and take off and I definitely definitely think that the moving mountains possibility is uh, still within us even though no, nobody really has the, the faith to move mountains um, so there is such a stretch of uh, reward and punishment I think the measurement uh, for the body is temperature. Uh, 
heat or am I too hot? Am I too cold? I just have to be just right. So the extremes of all things are extreme frost and extreme heat. Of course, when you get so, so cold, I read this in my psychology book, the, the heat receptors as well as the cold receptors both go off. That's why when you go to take a bath after you're outside playing in the snow, it, it hurts a lot. So what we know is rational isn't necessarily the laws of physics. What would um, th there are certain points of stretch that get so far that things bend or things go bizarre or get lost in a white room. So we, we have to uh, manifest our reality within that white room. Uh, we see that the world takes place psychologically, and though we have many pretty pictures, uh, sight, sound, taste, smell, feel, it's only an aid, only a symptom to uh, what's going on in our our thoughts, our our thoughts. So at the same time you can take that same white room and you can uh, change the windows, change the drapery, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can get some dogs, you can get some cats, and whatever takes place in here is what takes place down here. So in every situation, there was a day I was sitting in class and I've been doing really good since then. When I was in uh, high school, I would think, oh, well, I'll, I'll learn this later. Uh, because I, I couldn't focus at the same time as I'm being taught, if, if that makes sense. Um, but I realized that uh, that was a self-defeating thought. And I thought, well, now that I'm going to be in class, I'll sit there and listen and be on top of, be on top of, act as if, I'm learning, not as if I'm someone who's going to try and know it all. Um, and, and it helps like that. So, uh, despite your situations of what you blame uh, for what ails you, it, uh, all is your fault. It's all you. You did it all. You did it all to yourself. And you, you made that white room, that shiny, bright, whole, loving white room. And you added some darkness to it, to yourself. You cut out little shapes out of everything. You took everything and made it smaller and divided it. And you put things like this in your white room. Now each thing has the power of everything. It's just a symbolic little thing of division. This toothbrush right here. Everything that you ever need to know about life. And anything you need to know about the nature of a white room, of the nature of the creator, of the creation, of yourself, of your life, is in a toothbrush. Shh.